All right. Good morning, folks. It's good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us for this uh, devotional today. It's great to see Phil and Miss Peggy logged in and ready to go. And good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Pat. It's great to see you this morning. Just so thankful we can have this time to uh, be together and open God's Word and pray together. It's been pretty stressful week, I think, with the election going on and, and still not having any answers as to what's going to happen next in our country. And um, seems like the COVID numbers are surging and uh, just lots of things going on. I know even beyond that, you probably all have personal things that are going on in your lives and, and just a lot going on. And it's just wonderful that we can uh, just have take a few minutes each week and just be together and uh, open God's Word and allow Him to speak to us and um, go up to Him in prayer together. So uh, I'm just so thankful for each one of you that taking an interest in this devotional and hope it's something that we can keep going and keep, keep it, it will continue to be a blessing to everybody. Good morning, Patsy, Miss Patsy. It's good to see you this morning. And um, let's be opening our Bibles to Leviticus chapter 14, is where we're going to read first. Uh, and then we're going to read a passage in Luke 17. So uh, you might want to have both of those handy um, for, for our reading this morning. Good morning, Brother Jerry. It's great to see you. Good to be with you today, too. And so thankful for your encouragement um, regarding these devotionals and some other things. All right. Well, er earlier this week, we, we talked about leprosy a little bit. We talked about how compassionate Jesus was to a man sick with leprosy and how he reached out with his hand to touch that man, which was unthinkable at that day and time because leprosy was such a deadly and contagious disease. Well, in our devotional today, uh, we're going to go back to the idea of leprosy again. Uh, and that, that should be something that we can associate with as we read and study the Bible, because in a way, leprosy uh, is a lot like sin. Uh, sin is spiritually what leprosy was physically. Just as leprosy destroyed the life of the one that uh, contracted it, Sin destroys the life uh, of a person when it is present. And just as leprosy could spread so uh, uh, aggressively, well, in a similar way, sin uh, will spread aggressively. So when we see Jesus healing leprosy, it's a demonstration of his ability to cure an even more significant disease, which is sin. And uh, I want to first go to Leviticus chapter 14 today because it, it records an Old Testament ceremony that was very important. Uh, there were rare occasions when leprosy would go away. There were so many different kinds of leprosy and different degrees of it uh, that there were occasions when leprosy would go away on its own. And uh, once that happened, the person would be allowed to come back and be a part of the community again. But there was a ritual that they had to go through with the priest before that could happen. That's where Jesus was sending that man uh, in, in that passage that we read about on Tuesday when he said, go show yourself to the priest. He was sending him away to participate in this ceremony uh, that we're about to read about. All right, so we're in Leviticus 14, and we're going to read verses 4 through 7. Okay, it says, The priest shall command to take for him who is to be clean or cleansed two living and clean birds, cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop. The priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and dip them 
and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle it seven times on him who is to be clean from the leprosy, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall set the living bird loose in the open field. Can you see it? A priest taking these two birds, one bird is killed over running water, and the rest of these things, the, the other bird that's living, is uh, anointed with the blood uh, of that bird that was killed, and, and once that's done, then this other bird is released, set free to go fly away. And it's so symbolic when we think about our own leprosy being sin, it's so symbolic uh, of, of the process through what, which God has cleansed us. Uh, when we think about the one bird being killed, we think about Jesus. We think about him dying on that cross and, and giving his life uh, as he took our place to receive all of the punishment that our sin deserved. And uh, we think about how in order for us to be cleansed like that other living bird, we first have to be cleansed by two things. One is blood and the other is water. Notice how the bird was killed over running water. It's a combination of blood and water that brings about our cleansing. The blood, of course, is the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross. The water is baptism and how baptism brings us in contact with that blood that Jesus shed because we're baptized into his death, Romans 6, 3, and 4. So we are cleansed of our disease through blood and water. And because of that, like the living bird, we, are, we have been set free. We have been released to go and live our lives and to be free. But of course, our freedom was purchased by the one who was killed. What a beautiful symbolic ritual that, that helps us connect to what Jesus did for us. Now, Let's go over to Luke 17 now. The reason I go there is because this passage, um, what's the word, um, challenges us as to how we should react to this. Now that we know that we've been cleansed and we know the price that was paid in order to make that possible, uh, how should we react? Well, let's begin reading in verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. That's what lepers were supposed to do, is keep their distance. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when they saw him, or when he saw them, rather, he said to them, Go show yourselves to the priests. He was sending them to participate in this ritual that we just talked about. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. They did what Jesus told them to do, and the, the result was they were cleansed. If we do what Jesus tells us to do, guess what? We'll be cleansed also. So now that they're cleansed, they look down, their hands are no longer disfigured. There's no longer the, the pain of their disease coursing through their veins. Uh, in one second, they have been cured. Like we said the other day, from, they went one second from, being, uh, from knocking on death's door to the next second being a picture of health. And, and you can imagine um, the excitement that, that immediately came upon them in that moment. Now, what will they do? What, how will they react to this? Well, verse 15 says, One of them, only one? One of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his feet, uh, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So, Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? 
But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Literally, your faith has saved you. Evidently, he was cured of something much more than leprosy. His soul was saved because of the way he reacted to Jesus. Nine of these men went on their way, never, uh, never thinking about, never turning back to the one who brought such a remarkable gift into their lives. They just went on their way. Only one man turned back and fell on his face and glorified God in, in, in giving thanks to Jesus. This man was a Samaritan. Often enough, it, the, 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 this most sincere praise and worship comes from the most unlikely of people. And, and the reason I point us to this text today is, you and I, we were lepers. We were sentenced to death. And Jesus, like that bird, was willing to take our place and he was killed so that we might be set free, so that we might be cleansed. Let's make sure that even though we might be among the minority, we will take the time today to turn back, to worship the Lord and give thanks for this great gift that he's given us. We will not go on our way before we have first turned back to him to give thanks. And let's continue to show that, and, and, and let's, let's recognize that that if we do, he has even greater things in store for us. Will you bow with me as we pray together? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and the life that you've given and for all of the wonderful blessings that you have put in our way. We are so thankful, Lord, for your love that makes so many great things possible for us. We know, Father, that our sin caused us to be defiled and diseased. We know, Father, that our condition was hopeless, that we were sentenced to death because of the, the disease that we brought upon ourselves with our choices. And you intervened, Lord. You came to our rescue because you love us. You never stopped caring about us. You even allowed your son, your perfect son, Jesus, to die in our place. We know, Father, that without his blood and without the water of baptism, we could have never been cleansed from our leprosy. And today, we, we have hope and we have been set free. Lord, I, I pray if there's anyone watching this devotional who hasn't yet rendered obedience to the gospel by believing in Jesus, by confessing their faith and being baptized in his name, I pray that this message will give them that encouragement they need to take that step. And I pray that you'll help me to help them, Lord, to, to do those things that they need to do to be cleansed from this disease. And for those of us who have received your cleansing, help us, Father, to always have a spirit of thanksgiving and a spirit of praise and worship. We pray, Father, that you will help us to share this blessing with others. We continue our prayers, Lord, for those who are sick and dealing with cancer and dealing with disease and dealing with viruses. To know there are many, Father, who are facing great trials in their lives right now. We pray for your continued blessings upon each one. We continue to pray for our country as we go through this process of this election. We pray for your hand of providence to be at work right now, blessing us with the man who will um, provide leadership that will preserve our freedoms and, and, and promote the, the values that are consistent with your will. But most of all, whatever happens this week, Lord, 
We pray that those who are citizens in your kingdom, your church, will rise up and be the beacon of light that we must be. We know, Father, that no one else really can accomplish your will in this world like we can. So help us to be faithful and fervent, Lord, as we strive to do your will. Lord, please forgive us of our sins. Help us against the things that tempt us and protect us from evil. And help us to never forget that thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, folks. Uh, again, so, so thankful that you tuned in today and hope you've gotten some encouragement out of our devotional. Hope you have a great day and the great rest of the week and look forward to seeing you, Lord willing, on uh, Sunday. Uh, if you're able to join us for worship, whether it be in person or whether it be through the live stream, and uh, look forward to being together again next Tuesday for another dose of encouragement. Till then, everybody, God bless. Love you all.